Right now, this is Ticker News Insight. Hello and welcome back to Ticker News Insight, where we are looking to focus on the best of business with very clever people joining me from all around the world. I'm your host, Mike Loder, and to our latest story. And Jeremy Britton is be, uh, bringing 30 years experience, I should say, in stocks and financial markets and the several years in cryptocurrency he has under his belt to assist with a state of play of sorts. Jeremy co-founded the world's first diversified crypto mutual fund in 2016, which has outperformed Bitcoin every year for seven years. Let's bring him in for more. Good to see you. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me on the show. No worries at all. So let's start off quite simply. Why should people invest in crypto? Jeremy, if you can answer this question, I'm sure a lot of people out there would love a nice succinct answer because it's very confusing for a lot of people still. Yeah, it is very confusing for a lot of people. And you know, back in the 1960s, stocks and shares were very confusing for a lot of people until they actually brought out the, the mutual funds where anybody could actually get into stocks and shares. You didn't need a broker. You could have a diversified portfolio. And yeah, cryptocurrency is only new. It's only been around for the last 15 years or so. And there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of stuff in the media that's incorrect. And people are very unsure of this new asset class. Like, are they like stocks? Are they like shares? Are they commodities? Even the, the governing bodies like the SEC and the Commodities Trading Bureau aren't really sure how to classify these things. But the fact is they're here to stay. They're revolutionizing technology, re revolutionizing processes and building in a lot of transparency. It's basically like in the olden days, I would send you a photo of a cat in an envelope through the mail, it would take three days to get to you. Or I would send a check in, in you know, it'd take you three days to cash a check in. But now with the internet, I can send you a message like that. I can send you money like that. And yeah, as an ex as store of value, as an exchange of value, cryptocurrencies are definitely the future. 100%. And you see it more and more. And the fact that it's creating infrastructure um, to support it as well as interesting, the ANZ and NAB have created their own blockchain stable coins. Why yes. do people still need Bitcoin or, or other big cryptocurrencies, the ones that have sort of been in the highlight? You see them a lot in the media. Mm. Um, why would they still need those if uh, old mate down the road's creating their own experience? Yeah, it's, it's interesting in, in Australia, the banks have really jumped on this before the Reserve Bank, before the government has gotten into it. The private sector is going, this is the future. This is the technology. Visa, MasterCard and MX are all coming out with their own crypto projects as well and you know, making decent money off it. The, the big fund managers, Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, JP Morgan, these guys are getting into it before the governments are actually doing it. And it's just about speed and transparency. But the other thing is, yeah, Bitcoin, obviously, people not for its volatility, it goes up and down, like the stock market goes up and down, the gold market goes up and down. So a dollar is a dollar is a dollar, except during the pandemic, when of course, you know, central banks printed billions and billions of, of, yeah. of dollars, and the currency value actually went down. So if you're looking for something that's a store of value, because a dollar isn't what it used to be three years ago, if not 10 years ago. And things like gold, things like stocks and things like cryptocurrencies have gone up in that time. Yeah, absolutely. So as a financial advisor, with all your years of experience, you've witnessed this unfold. Do you still recommend people start looking at it or perhaps how they get involved with, uh, you know, investing in crypto? Yeah, we, we've been providing free information for the last eight years, even before we started the Boston Coin Fund. We we're giving away free information to educate people about this and how they could put a little bit of their portfolio. You don't put your life savings in there because it is very volatile. It's like investing into technology stocks before, you know, 98, 99, when there was everybody was jet.com and pets.com and this sort of stuff. And after the 99 crash, you know, a lot of those companies did go broke. But, you know, companies like Amazon and Apple and Microsoft and Google went on to become trillion dollar events. So putting a little bit of your money in there creates additional alpha. It gives you something to, to fall back on when stocks and, sh and shares and property and things do go up and down. It's just diversifying your portfolio. So we provide free information or we can actually do it for you if you don't want to learn or if you don't have time to learn. Absolutely. Well, yeah, just to finish for me, I, I suppose you could give us an outline of where people could connect with you and I suppose learn a little bit more about uh, the easiest way for someone to get started in cryptocurrency with, you know, small amounts like 100 or perhaps $1,000. Is that the recommendation you'd have? 
Well, it, dep it depends on how much money that you have and how much time that you have. So we, we run the, the free not-for-profit is Krillionaire.com. So C-R-Y for crypto and the last bit of billionaire. Now, if you want to learn how to do it yourself, because we're all kids once and we had to change our own oil and change our own spark plugs. But if you're in that stage of life where you don't have time to manage your own finances, you don't want to learn it, then obviously go to Boston Trading Co. and we can, bostontrading.co, and we can actually do it for you. Jeremy Britton, I want to thank you so much for your time and, of course, outlying uh, what's going on in the markets at the moment, bringing crypto a little more clearly into the space for those who are looking. I'm still learning, that's for sure. But thank you again <laughs> for your time and hopefully we can reconnect again. Thanks, Mike. Cheers. And of course, thank you to all of you for tuning in. I hope you've learned something from our discussion today. I've been your host, Mike Loader, and be sure to head to tickernews.co for more. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Be well. Mm -hmm.